Despite a lot of disappointing results, the uh, Michigan State Spartans can, of course, put a good stamp on the season and make things a whole lot better if they could find a way to upset uh, our rival Michigan in the big house coming up on Saturday. We've got Ryan O'Blenis from the only colors on SP Nation. And certainly there were thoughts that uh, this season may not reach those heights, but at the same time that it would be a team that's contending in the Big Ten and headed toward postseason play for sure and uh, really hasn't looked anything close to what we saw last year. Yeah, you know, I think most Michigan State fans probably anticipated a small step back. Obviously, you, you lost Kenneth Walker three, who was a generational talent running back that you can't really replace. And, uh, you know, several other key starters and contributors from last year's team, but there was still a thought that, you know, this team would make some noise. You know, Mel Tucker was – leading it in the right direction. I think we ran a survey early in the season and uh, about you know how many wins did Michigan State fans e- expect this season, and the majority of the answers were 10 wins, and I think nine wins was, was the second most. So, um, you know, obviously there were still some pretty high hopes, and it hasn't really, um, you know, been the season that Michigan State fans or I think, you know, many in the program expected. There were a lot of questions about uh, surrounding Mel Tucker when he got the job. Of course, he had success at Georgia as an assistant. He goes to Colorado, only spends one season in Boulder and goes five and seven. So coming off one successful campaign in Michigan State after the COVID year, and then now with the struggles that uh, the team is enduring, is there any thought that, okay, a lot of money was 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 given to this guy and he's really only had one huge season. So maybe Michigan State jumped a little too quickly to keep uh, him locked down. I don't necessarily think so. You know, I think it was the right move at the time. There was a lot of talk that LSU and other schools were going to pursue him. And, um, you know, the majority of his contract is, uh, you know, privately funded. So it's not coming straight out of Michigan State's athletic department uh, department's budget. So, um, you know, that's not a big concern for me. I know people have kind of questioned his contract. And obviously when you're making that kind of money, regardless of where it's coming from, um, you know, to do this job, then the more is expected out of you than this three and four start that Michigan State has had. And, you know, obviously at the very least, you would expect this team to make a, a bowl game when, um, you know, your head coach is making $9.5 million a year. So, you know, I think there's definitely a little bit of give and take there, but I don't think it's a major concern. Brian, the first uh, time I saw Michigan State extensively was the game at Washington. I saw a little bit in the early non-conference uh, games, but they go to Washington, and a lot of people made um, – much of Michael Penix going off for close to 400 yards and all of that. And certainly that was a huge factor in the game, but that's not something we didn't get accustomed to seeing on occasion uh, last season out of the secondary. I was more alarmed at that point that they couldn't run the ball and that Peyton Thorne was running for his life constantly. And I was thinking this team is not prepared, at least based on this one sample size in Seattle uh, in the trenches to be the type team that you would think that they need to be in the Big Ten. Yeah, you know, like, like I mentioned, last year's team lost a lot of key contributors, and that included, um, you know, I think five or six guys on the offensive line. Because, uh, you know, in the 2021 season, Michigan State basically had two units of, of, uh, of you know, different five-man groups they could use on the offensive line. And this year – you know, there, there's a lot more limited depth. Um, you know, they, they rotate in a couple of guys, but it's mostly been the, the five starters playing, um, you know, with guys like Brian Green or uh, Brandon Baldwin rotating in. But, um, you know, they I, I would say they have been better in pass protection. Um, you know, that Washington game, Thorne was under a lot of pressure, but they hold up better that way. It, it, you brought it up, too. It's the running game that's really been a struggle for the offensive line. Um they haven't been able to create a lot of holes. And, you know, when they have created those holes, Jalen Berger, uh, Jared Broussard, those guys haven't displayed great vision to hit those holes. Um, honestly, I think Elijah Collins has been, you know, the best looking running back on the team this year. And he's only gotten limited uh, touches, which has been kind of a point of frustration for Michigan State fans as to why, you know, Collins isn't getting more touches. I thought Berger ran hard against, uh, you know, his former team, Wisconsin, before the bye week. And I think that. 
he still has a lot of potential there. Um, you know, so I don't think it's all on the offensive line, but they've definitely kind of struggled there to, to open up the holes. And, um, you know, it, it's definitely a different unit from last year when you had, I think, 10 or 11 guys who played over 500 snaps. We got Ryan O'Blend is on the line from SB Nation's The Only Colors. Michigan State goes to the big house, takes on Michigan coming up where Mel Tucker is 2-0 and against uh, Michigan. Jim Harbaugh, I believe, is dipped to 3-4 and against uh, the Spartans. So coming um, at that direction, uh, Mel Tucker is obviously going to have a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of fan favorites um, if he continues this streak against uh, Michigan. And uh, this is the kind of game that can salvage a season to a certain extent. Uh, and, and Jim Harbaugh in the other direction can ruin what they have going at Michigan to a certain extent, although it didn't last year. But still, that does this game just counts for one in the standings, but is it a lot more than that? Yeah, you know, I always think that Michigan State obviously gets up for this game. Uh, there's always been that kind of uh, backhanded disrespect from the Michigan program toward Michigan State. Um, you know, even even this week they've had players come out and say, you know, they're going to show them no mercy, blow them out, whatnot. And, um, you know, Mel Tucker's told his players to, to kind of keep quiet about that, you know, don't give them any bulletin board material. I guess Tucker has showed them some bulletin board materials from what Michigan's been saying. Um, you know, it, it, this is a rivalry that runs really deep uh, because, you know, going all the way back to when, uh, you know, Michigan State was first trying to join the Big Ten, you know, Michigan didn't want them to do that. They tried what they could do to keep them out. Um, so, you know, it, it goes deeper than just on the field, um, you know, and, and it, it certainly seems that Michigan State over the last several years ha has taken the rivalry more seriously. You know, a lot of Michigan fans would say that, you know, Ohio State's their chief rival, which is true, but um, they kind of disregard Michigan State and kind of downplay the rivalry, even though, you know, it, I think it does mean a lot to them too. Um, and that's kind of what irks at Michigan State fans, I think, is, is kind of that, um, unwillingness uh, admit that the rivalry is on the same level for them. And, you know, obviously that isn't all Michigan fans or not everybody coming from the program, but that's kind of what the, the general uh, feeling is for Michigan State fans and the Michigan State program itself. Um, you know, they, they know that kind of disrespect and that chip on the shoulder, and they're always going to bring that kind of tough attitude. Uh, that was another question that we asked this week in a different survey. We don't have the results back yet, but, you know, it, it what's more important to you kind of, you know, beating Michigan this year or making a low level bowl game after a disappointing season. Um, so, you know, I do, as you mentioned, it's only one game, but it kind of counts more on a morale level. If you're able to beat Michigan, I think if you're Michigan state, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. And, you know, people are going to look at it different ways based on, you know, the, their own thought patterns, but certainly this is always a game that Michigan state has circled up you know, on its schedule that they're going to get up for. That's probably their biggest game of the regular season every year. And it also has to irk Michigan State fans because, so this obviously is a legitimate rivalry that is one of the best in college football. And it gains that legitimacy from some of the things that you mentioned about the origin of Michigan State's entry into the league. When you've got two programs that are in the same state, there's one check mark right there. Then they play in the same conference. There's another check mark. They play in the same division. There's another check mark. And then on top of that, you know, it'd be one thing if let's say Michigan was dominating this series and they can look down at Michigan state. However, it's the other way around, at least in the recent past, I think it's 10 out of 14 for Michigan state in this series. So uh, at this point, the Michigan, uh, that, that uh, kind of condescending look would just be a matter of this is who we are and what we do regardless because it appears as though they could lose 20 in a row and it there's there's not much backing up their their arrogance at this point it's it's just based on th their stance rather than reality exactly and like I said it's not all Michigan fans it's not all coming from sure. the program but that's the general kind of yeah. consensus that that Michigan state fans get and that's why they take this so seriously 
So I'm guessing that Michigan State fans do not root for Michigan when they go play outside the conference. No, not generally. I mean, maybe if it helps Michigan State standing in some way or helps them get into a bowl game. But, you know, even I remember last year, for example, the the Big Ten championship game, Michigan versus Iowa, was another question that we asked was, you know, if Iowa ends up winning this game, it could very well bump Michigan State out of a New Year's Six Bowl. Would you rather see Iowa win just to spite Michigan or would you rather Michigan win to kind of assure that Michigan State gets into – New Year's Six Bowl, which obviously they did, but the overwhelming, uh, you know, majority of the responses, I think it was like 87% of our poll or something like that, said that they'd rather see Michigan lose, which I I didn't quite feel the same way in that instance. But, yeah, so, I mean, it's very rarely that you'll see Michigan State fans rooting for Michigan. Is the defense playing any better? Of course, they they are coming off a game against Wisconsin two weeks ago in which – you know, both teams are struggling coming into the game. Michigan State pulls out the win in double overtime. And then we see Wisconsin turn around and play their best game of the season. They dominate Purdue, who'd been playing good football. So you kind of connect these dots. And um, the, is Michigan playing a little bit better based on that performance? Yeah, so I think what you saw in the Wisconsin game was that Michigan State was playing kind of a run-heavy team against Wisconsin, so they moved from their normal base 4-2-5 set to a more 4-3 set, and and they took Jacoby Winman, who had been playing kind of as a stand-up edge rusher defensive end for most of the year, and they put him back to his natural spot at linebacker, and he had a great game. Ended up winning a Big Ten Player of the Week for the third time this year. He was the first Spartan ever do that, and um, he was just flying over all over the field from – uh, the linebacker position, he made a really good interception that set up a Michigan State touchdown, and he uh, also made um, a, a, or he forced a fumble and double overtime that gave Michigan State the ball back and the, the opportunity to win, which they ended up doing. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, you saw the effort in that game, certainly, um, and you saw the adjustments being made in, uh, you know, I, I think in the second half against – in the Maryland game, the defense played a lot better, too. You know, defensive coordinator Scotty Hazleton has been under a lot of scrutiny this this season, um, and, you know, most of it is rightfully so. But at the same time, you know, when the players aren't making the plays, it's kind of hard for him to do anything. So, so you've seen him change some things up, like, you know, you, early in the season and a lot of times last year, Michigan State would, would line their cornerbacks up several yards off of the wide receiver pre-snap at the line of scrimmage and, you know, they would just take advantage of that soft zone and that cushion. Um, and lately you're seeing a little bit more press man. You're seeing a little bit more disguise and coverage, I think, pre-snaps. Um, you know, even even sometimes like a nickelback blitz I saw in there once. Um, so they are trying different things. It's not always been successful. As you, you mentioned earlier, the past defense has been an issue ever since last season. Um, you know, overall, it's been just as bad, if not worse, this year. Uh, they it, they looked a lot better against Wisconsin. I think uh, they held Graham Mertz to something like 131 yards, and I want to say that was the lowest uh, passing yards total allowed by Mel Tucker, something along those lines. So there have been improvements made. Um, there's certainly still a lot of work to do. I think Michigan's going to be an interesting challenge. Um because they can do a lot of things on the ground game, obviously, but I think where J.J. McCarthy is dangerous at is the intermediate kind of short and intermediate passing. Um, you know, his deep ball is still a little bit questionable. But he's a really talented player. He's, he's going to challenge this team. And another thing about the defense, too, is that they've just been decimated by injuries. Uh, you know, they, they lost Darius Snow in the first game of the year. For the season, he he was a guy who played safety and nickelback last year, and, and they brought him down to uh, linebacker this year. They also lost Xavier Henderson in that season opener to Western Michigan, and he finally just came back against Wisconsin. And you could see the boost that he gave the defense because not only is he the best option at safety, he's also the team leader who quarterbacks that defense and leads the entire team, um, you, you know, vocally and – by example, and having him back, and they got Jacob Slade back that game, defensive tackle, makes a huge difference in the interior of that line and, and generating a push and being able to stop the run. 
Um, Kendall Brooks missed the Wisconsin game, but I think the hope is that he'll be back for the Michigan game to pair him with Henderson at safety. Um, you know, Jeff Petrowski and Chris Bogle, defensive ends, have been out. Marquis Lowry, the cornerback, who's been out. So hopefully Michigan State was able to to use this bye week um, to get a lot of guys healthy and back. I don't think we'll see Bogle, uh, but possibly Petrowski and some of those other guys will return this week. And, um, you know, that's going to be huge for Michigan State if, if the defense is, is healthy. Mel Tucker looks to go to 3-0 and against uh, the Maize and Blue. They get together at Michigan coming up on Saturday. Check out Ryan's work and the rest of the crew there at the only colors on SB Nation to get yourself set for Michigan State and Michigan on Saturday. Ryan, we appreciate you stopping by to break things down. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.